We talked about the definite integral. Now we've got this thing called the indefinite integral. What is the difference? There is the difference. There are no limits. I haven't put any numbers in. Now that's why it's called the indefinite integral. The first one was called the definite integral because we had limits that we were substituting in. So we definitely get an answer. We come up with a number. Here we have no numbers to substitute in, so we're not sure. So we're indefinite. We are not sure what the answer is. The best we can do, because remember here, now I have to put, like we did with the primitive function, plus a constant. So with a definite integral, I don't have to worry about the plus constant. With an indefinite integral, I do. So I need to have plus a constant there. It may be there. I might have a value of zero. Don't know, but that's the point. I don't know. So I put plus a constant. Then there's this, what's sometimes known as the useful theorem. Because it's very useful. If you have some function to the power of n, we can still use that idea of add one to the power over the power. But we must also divide by the coefficient of x. Now this only works for linear functions, so it has to be a linear function. So 5x plus 2, 3x plus 4, whatever. But if you've got that situation, you can still just go add 1 to the power of power. So you do not have to expand the whole thing out. Example of that, that we have 2 minus 5x to the power of 3. Yeah, of course I could expand it out, but why waste time? I'll add 1 to the power, 4 over the power 4, but I also, on the bottom of the fraction, multiply by the coefficient of x, which in this case is negative 5. I get negative 1 20th, 2 minus 5x to the power of 4. Again, I leave it factorised, because it's going to be easier if I do have to end up doing substituting. So what does it save me doing? It has saved me expanding the cubic out originally, and then having to factorise the answer. It's done it all in one hit. Very useful for something like this because we'll put that into index form. Well, how on earth would you have expanded 3x plus 1 to the negative 2 anyway? How, how do you expand that out? But I don't have to. Add 1 to the power, negative 1, over the power, negative 1, but also multiplying by the coefficient of x. So I have negative 3. And there's my answer, minus 1 on 3 outside of 3x plus 1. I've taken it out of index form. Again, very, very useful for a third. Put that in index form. Once again, how on earth would you expand that out? 2x plus 1 to the power of a half. Don't have to. Add 1 to the power over the power. Oh, we're talking about a fraction, so I'll just turn that upside down. 2 thirds, but also on the bottom of the fraction, multiply by the coefficient of x, which is 2. So I get 1 third 2x plus 1 to the power of 3 on 2. That's the answer a mere mortal would give. But super mathematicians will go, no, 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 3 on 2, that's the same as 1 and a half. So I have 2x plus 1 to the power of 1 times 2x plus 1 to the power of a half, which is the square root of 2x plus 1. And we get a much more impressive answer for people to look at and easier to substitute into. Oh, 5e.